Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but I like Coco. Coco is a good movie. It's got good music. It's got a great story. And most importantly, the animation and the art style in the movie is incredible. But what if I told you, though? What if I told you there was a movie made before Coco that is even better when it comes to the to the art and the in the animation? Not necessarily the story, but mostly the, the cool art and stuff. And I am, of course, talking about the title of the it's in the title of the, the Book of Life. I genuinely don't understand how this movie went under my radar as I, you know, I'm always searching for some cool styled animated movies. But someone actually recommended this while I was on stream and I was completely enamored by the art style and was blown away at how I have never seen this. Now, obviously, let's let's talk about the elephant in the room. You know, Coco being released after the Book of Life, there was plenty of speculation of people like saying, oh, Coco just stole uh, off the Book of Life. You know, oh, there's uh, so many similarities and stuff. They just ripped it off, blah, blah, blah. And after watching both movies, I can absolutely say with confidence that they're just, uh, they're too different. There's, there's so many differences when it comes to these movies. The only similarities we got is the concept of following your heart. We do also have the music element where the parents are kind of like, no, music is a waste of time. You need to do something important like taxes, become a lawyer, fight bulls. You know, normal, normal jobs. But the reasons for the families shaming the child for wanting to do music are completely different reasons. Let's talk about the main comparison is of course Dios to Dios de, which is of course Dios de los Muertos, which is just kind of goofy because that's just been a style. Like that is the style in culture and tradition behind that. But when it comes to the main thing of the movie, the story, all that different stuff, the, there's not really much of a comparison at all. But boy, the character designs on this movie is bonkers. Like Ron Perman's character Zabalba is by far the most visually interesting character I have ever seen in a movie. There are so many different moving parts to his character. Like the more you stare at it and the more you look, the more you start noticing all these little bits and pieces around his body that are moving. I couldn't even tell that his irises and his eyes were just skulls that were rotating. You start to pick out all these cool little details here and there and it is just absolutely insane when it comes to animation. The animators really went above and beyond when it comes to this movie. Now, before we get into why this movie is one of the most underrated gems I have seen in a long time, let's talk about something that we all know and we all love. Debt. Don't you get, don't you guys love debt? Oh, what's that? What's that? You, you don't? Oh, okay. Well, fantastic. Cause I have something for you. PDS debt. Now in our current climate, our current economy, debt is basically inevitable. At one time or another in your life, you're gonna suffer from debt. And honestly, if you guys heard the amount of debt that I am in, you'd probably feel better about your debt. But that constant stress and that constant feeling of just being drowned by all this debt, every time you get a paycheck, you see that and think, oh man, that would be great if I could actually use it. But no, I have to pay all of that money to debt. Is that right? Is that how life is? It's, it, that's pretty much how a lot of people's lives are. But with PDS debt, you could finally get a hold of that debt that has been holding you down for a long time. Credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills. PDS has got you covered. PDS debt provides options that consolidate your debt into one low monthly payment. Everyone with 10K or more in debt automatically qualifies for PDS debt. And the best part, and the best part, no minimum credit score required. That's fantastic for me. And if you are all worried thinking, oh, this is just too good to be true. There is no way this could actually work. PDS Debt is actually a top rated company on Google and actually has an A plus rating on the BBB. And PDS is offering you guys a free debt analysis. That's right. And it only takes 30 seconds. So why don't you guys head over to PDS? So why don't you guys head over to pdsdebt.com slash bionic pig to get your free debt assessment today. So the movie is set in that classic storybook style, which I'll be honest is kind of uh, lame. It's kind of stupid. I don't like it. All right. I will say it. I don't like it. I feel like that just makes the stakes of the movie a little bit less because it just makes you feel like it's, you know, not real, which obviously it's not real, but you know what I mean. Some things just don't hit as hard whenever it's just a story told from a character 
within the movie rather than just having that story be the movie. I feel like the only time this ever works is when there is a specific reason for this. Maybe the two worlds somewhat coincide with each other or there are different parallels to each world, but no, it's literally just a teacher who took a bunch of uh, a delinquent children who were being who being bad kids to a back room and started reading a book. The main story centers around a bet that was made by two deities. La Muerte, who is the ruler of the land of the remembered and Zibalba, ruler of the land of the forgotten. Throughout the movie, it's kind of hinted that they're kind of like interested in each other. They're kind of like a little bit of a couple and stuff. But anyway, they end up making a bet. Whoever wins this said bet gets to rule the land of the remembered. So. Pretty much, it's just a win situation for Zabalba. But this bet has to do with three people, Manolo, Joaquin, and Marina. Manolo is a boy who comes from a long lineage of bull hunters, but he actually ends up having more of a passion for music. And Joaquin, who is the son of this great hero that everyone looks up to, he dreams of becoming a hero just like his father, even better than his father. And this bet is all about who gets the girl? It's kind of a situation where Zabalba believes that, you know, girls fall for more materialistic stuff, more heroic things, more stuff like that. Whereas La Muerte believes that girls fall for more passion, more heartfelt things and different stuff like that. But Marina, who is the girl they end up fighting over in the movie, she's just, you know, young independent spirit who dreams of breaking free from the constraints of the culture that she's in. But anyway, these two men become influenced by different things that these deities do in order to help their side of the bet. La Muerte shows Manolo the importance of kindness and having a good heart and caring for others, whereas Zabalba is way more shallow and shows Joaquin the concept of doing anything to win to get on top, even when it comes to things like cheating, as Zabalba does just that, because he ends up giving Joaquin the Medal of Everlasting Life which makes him invulnerable to any harm. But one day, Marina gets forced to leave town by her father in order to teach her to become a proper lady. And I feel like these shots and these scenes of them growing up is very important and very well done because we get to see that they are forced into doing these things. But the only difference here is Manolo is the only one who actually follows his own path regardless of what his family and his father is forcing him to do, whereas Joaquin is just listening and following the path that was already paved for him, which is a really big point of this movie is kind of following your own path. And just because someone has already paved the way for you and made a path for you does not mean you have to follow that. So these two boys grow up and they both wait for the day that Marina comes back. Elo, as he gets older, becomes more of a deep, loving, heartfelt person by following his part, especially when it comes to music. While Joaquin becomes exactly what he set out to be, a pompous hero who saves so many different people. Everyone loves him. He's famous, he's rich, he's handsome, he's skilled, he's talented. All of the above, the complete package, right? And I'm not gonna lie, the first half of the movie, I didn't really like too much. When Maria comes back, it just turns into a back and forth, uh, a battle of who gets the girl. You know, who's gonna impress the girl more? Manolo tries to impress her by, you know, passion, showing her his music, singing songs, which I just like to mention. I really don't like that they just did cover songs in a more uh, Spanish style way. I feel like they should have made original music, which would have made the movie a lot better, but you know, I mean, whatever. And Joaquin was doing the polar opposite where he was kind of bragging, showing her how rich and cool and how everyone loves him. And he's so talented and badass, believing that that will win her heart and stuff like that. So it's kind of like the polar opposites of what people believe uh, women love. You know, it's the heartfelt, super sensitive dude who has passion and loves music. And then the the douchebag who's super cool, has a buttload of money and is handsome and everyone loves him. But you know, seeing two dudes fight over a girl just, I didn't care for. I was, I was thoroughly bored during this time, I'm not gonna lie. But then shit got real really fast. And then the movie got interesting really fast. I mean, throughout the movie, it was pretty obvious that Marina had more of a thing for Manolo because I mean, he actually loved her whenever Joaquin was more like 
oh, I just want you as a trophy, as a thing, you know? But right when he was about to propose to her, Zabalba came out with a snake that bit Marina, which ended up stopping her heart. He ends up giving Marina over to Joaquin and the townspeople, and I found it weird that everyone just assumed that, like, Manola was the one who killed her or something. I don't know. I thought that was kind of goofy. Like, obviously, it's not like he stabbed her or something like that. Because he gives off Marina to them, super sad, super depressed. What did you do? What did you do to her? Disgusting you. Like, what, what do you think he did? She got bit by a fucking snake, bro. Chill. But anyway, Zibalba comes out once again to cheat. He says he will bring Marina back in place of your soul, which... He happily agreed to. So Manolo gets bit twice by the snake, which sends him to the land of the remembered. And that was an important thing when I said twice because Marina was only bit once and apparently that just put her in a paralysis state so she wasn't even dead in the first place. So in turn, that means Zabalba automatically won the bet because there is actually a situation, an ultimatum, if you will, that Joaquin gave Marina and the townspeople. He basically told Marina, hey, if you don't marry me, I'm going to dip, you know, and I'm going to leave the town to get ravaged by bandits. Remember the Joaquin has that little metal that makes him invulnerable and he protects the town people from all of these bandits. And if he's gone, then the town's kind of screwed. But anyway, back to Manolo. He's in the land of the dead. He meets all of his past family members, which is pretty entertaining. And holy shit, the land of the dead is pretty freaking cool. Honestly, not going to lie. I think it looks prettier and cooler than Coco. I mean... That's just me, that's just me. But it is interesting when he meets his past family members because he meets some of them who are pretty chill. He meets some of them who are like, how dare you shame the family name by doing music over this? He even meets one who talks about how he wished he was able to be an opera singer, but didn't because his family didn't allow him. And then he meets Zibalba, who is now the new leader of the land of the remembered because he automatically won the bet. And again, Zabalba's character just looks so freaking cool and scary and, and threatening at the same time. And not only in looks, but Ron Perlman's voice just kind of is always intimidating. You know what I mean? So we go back to the town and Maria is back to life. And they also find out that Manolo has passed away. And this is where you could start seeing in Joaquin that he's starting to realize like, oh shit, I'm a dick. But shit starts getting bad whenever the bandits find out that Joaquin is the one who holds the medal of everlasting life. So the leader of the bandits decide that they're going to raid the village and try to steal the medal from Joaquin, which is a problem because if they succeed and kill off the town, Manolo and the rest of his family are going to pass away because no longer is anyone alive that remembers them. So in turn, they would get sent to the land of the forgotten. So Manolo goes on a journey in order to get to the land of the forgotten to speak with La Muerte and tell her, hey, yo, Zabalba kind of cheat like he cheated and this whole situation's kind of screwed, so help us out. And he has to go through a bunch of different trials in order to reach there. And all of these trials are just, they're just fun and they're cool. Like the one part where he's on like the big maze with the rolling balls and like, it's just, it's visually pleasing. And then we meet the candle maker. And again, the area is just super pretty. It's super cool. I like the character. He's fun. And this is where we see the title of the movie, The Book of Life. And the Book of Life is kind of like a concept of saying like, hey, you need to write your own Book of Life. Because within the Book of Life, everybody's story is written. However, some people's stories aren't written. The ones that write their own story, which happens to be Manolo. He's writing his own story. He's choosing his own path and doing what is in his heart. And I feel like that is like a big part of this movie. A big message is like, yo, you know, write your own path, write your own book of life, write your own story. Don't follow the path that someone else has written for you. Do your own thing, which is a great message to have. So with a little bit of convincing, the candle maker does let them go to the land of the forgotten. And La Muerte's, uh, She's pretty pissed off. 
pretty upset that Zabalba lied to her and cheated. So while all this is happening, the big bad bandit king comes to the town and starts legitimately killing people. Manolo's father happens to appear in the land of the forgotten. They show him standing up to the bandit king and then they just cut to him transporting the land of the forgotten. So it's safe to say he didn't win. He didn't win. So Manolo ends up making a bet with Zibalba. If Manolo wins, Zibalba will bring him back to life and admit that he lost the bet. But if he loses, Zibalba will not only take control of the land of the forgotten, but the land of the forgotten and the land of the remembered, and he'll have control over everything. And the bet happened to be he would have to defeat every single bull that everyone in his family has defeated before him. And again, I can't really express this enough, the visuals are just cool. They're always cool. They're fun to look at. I like it. When when they transformed into the gigantic bull with fire, badass. Cool. And even in the face of death, even right in front of this gigantic bull that is on fire when he's so close to dying, instead of picking up a sword to finish off the bull, he picks up his guitar instead and sings a song of apology to the bulls, to all of the past lives of the bulls that his family has murdered, which in turn let these bulls' souls free. It wasn't really said in the movie that that's really what happened, but that's kind of what I got with it, and it's kind of implied, because it's not like the bull died, right? The bull actually disappeared, because technically, the only way to beat these bulls, because they aren't alive, you can't kill them. They are souls. And it seems like they are souls that are just hell bent on revenge. They're like vengeful spirits, basically. So him singing that song and trying to apologize for all of the past bulls that have died from his family, that is what let these souls free. So Manolo won the bet and he is poofed back to existence right in front of the ginormous and Marina versus all of the bandits with the townsfolk behind him. But with a twist, Zabalba, since he was very impressed with what Manolo did, actually brought back all of his family because it happened to be the Day of the Dead. And he said like, hey, yo, we got a little leeway here. We got a little pull with this kind of stuff, you know? So we get a really cool fight scene with all of the family fighting all of the bandits, them fighting the bandit king. There's some funny parts, there's some goofy parts, there's some cool parts. So after the bandit king realized that he lost, in a fit of rage, he decides that he's going to blow himself up along with everyone in the village. All right, a little, a little bit extreme, I'd say. But the ending scene is so good. I, I love this part because even I was a little bit confused when it happened. So there was this giant bell, right? And Joaquin and Manolo are both under this bell with the bandit king. And I was thinking like, oh yeah, it's probably gonna be a situation where one of them knocks the other out and then it explodes and one of them dies or something like that. And we're not gonna lie, I thought it was gonna be Joaquin. I thought he was gonna be the one to sacrifice himself. But at the last second, Manolo kicked out Joaquin and the bomb went off. But I'll leave it right here and say like, hey yo, if you wanna like watch the movie and like watch the lead up to, to what happens here, like this would probably be like major spoiler territory, I guess. But Manolo walks out completely unharmed. And at first I was like, oh, it's probably like Zabalba or La, La Muerta. She's like, you know, just poofed him back to life or something like that. But no, it wasn't them at all. Joaquin actually, without Manolo knowing, put the Medal of Everlasting Life on Manolo without him knowing because he was planning on both of them staying under the bell but only Manolo would be the one to survive. So Joaquin was actually planning on sacrificing himself in that situation, which is a fantastic way to end this movie. Joaquin realizing that all of this cheating stuff, all like this metal that has basically controlled his entire life and made him feel invincible, made him cocky and pompous. He realized all of that meant nothing and all of it was just empty flair. And at the end, he had a huge character change realizing that you know, you need to care for people, right? Like being selfish only gets you so far in life. And in the end of the movie, Maria obviously ends up marrying Manolo and they have a little song at the end and we got a great end. Fantastic movie. I feel like this movie has so many good messages behind it, not just about like writing your own story and following your dreams, but also the dangers of becoming super selfish and pompous and full of yourself and thinking that money and, and fame and all this different stuff can buy anyone, when really the only thing that matters in life is you, 
writing your own story and following your heart and believing in what you want to believe in. Good ass movie, good ass story, good ass animation. I highly recommend if you guys haven't seen this one yet. Uh, I would say it's on par, if not better than Coco. I mean, personally, I think I like the story of Coco better, but animation wise, it's top tier shit. Highly recommend. That's all I got for today. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Now,